Hi there, I'm Lisa Doyle with Jayrocky for Realtors, and welcome to our How Is the Market segment. Today is January 3rd, of course, 2013, so we're just heading off the brand new year, and I have a very special guest to help share some information about what's going on. Um, this is Jeff Spazito. Thanks for helping me, Jeff. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Jeff is the founder and, you know, basically founder, CEO, you know, president yep. of... J. Rockcliffe Realtors. J. Rockcliffe Realtors. Right. And that's all of the East Bay. So I wanted to get your perspective, Jeff. I mean, we've had so many people asking us right now, you know, what's going on with our market? We've seen such dramatic change over this last year. Um, someone like you who's more connected nationally, you know, through your N the right. National Association of Realtors... Mm -hmm. How do you see our market in the East Bay right now? Yep. Well, our, our market, I think it's pretty, uh, um, I would say it's pretty much like the rest of the country. Yeah. There's a shortage of inventory everywhere. Prices are increasing because of that. Right. And, you know, it's, it, the market's definitely in an upswing. Yeah. You know, we have historic low interest rates, and they're going to continue to be that way for at least through the first quarter, if not the first six months of 13. Right. And so, you know, when you put great interest rates with prices going up, you create a demand for buyers. In, but unfortunately, we have a shortage of inventory, yeah. which is really making the prices skyrocket. Yeah, it's like that upward pressure. And one of the statistics that we've been, you know, of course, keeping everyone posted on is about a year ago, we had 2,400 active listings in our East Bay, which is, you know, mm -hmm. Pleasanton through Walnut Creek and the Danville Corridor. Mm -hmm. Right now, as of this morning, there's only 335 houses listed in, in that entire area. And that's on the MLS. And that's exactly. That's the whole MLS. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's the entire MLS. And yes. so inventory is so low and the pressure, you know, upward pressure. Now, you mentioned interest rates. Mm -hmm. um, some people feel like our interest rates should stay low longer. Do you think 2013 they will rise? Well, based on your you know, just from what I'm hearing, because I'm obviously I'm involved with the state. I'm a right. state director for the California Association of Realtors. I'm also on the board of directors for the National Association. Nobody's projecting anything farther than about 180 days out. Okay. I mean, they could stay low like this throughout the year, but nobody is predicting anything past the first three to six months. Okay. So, I mean, they can, but yeah, it's we, anybody's guess. It all happens. It all depends what's going on with the economy. Yeah, that's right. We we know that they'll rise, and so right. they have to go up at some point. It's well, just it's a matter a, of when. They're definitely in the, the yeah. rise. Yeah, exactly. So obviously, the demand for buyers right now. Um, so now you mentioned, you know, your connections with the National Association mm -hmm. of Realtors and the California Association of Realtors. Is there anything changing right now that we wouldn't necessarily know about, or what's coming? Like any trends that are coming that will affect us? No, you know, it's it's. You know, it's been pretty much since we had the, the downturn in the market. Right. Uh, it's been a real slow recovery since then. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just tripped up about 2% a year. Very slow, but it's going in the right direction. Right. And, you know, we're going to see uh, only in sale units, we're only going to see an increase in 13, probably from anywhere from 3 to 5 6%. Right. But we're going to see an increase in prices, mm -hmm. maybe in some markets, because we're all in a bunch of micro markets. You know, even the East Bay has micro markets right. in the East Bay. Right. The whole East Bay is not the same. Different marketplaces are, you know, yeah. going to see different rises in prices. So, but we're, you know, nationally they're looking at prices going anywhere from seven to ten percent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could have markets where prices may only go up five, or you could have some markets where they're going to go up fifteen. Yeah. It all depends on the inventory and, the, and that demand for the buyers in that market. Exactly. You know, one question that we haven't seen a lot of um, bank-owned homes in our area, in our mm -hmm. greater East Bay, but we, I still have clients asking me every day, what about the shadow inventory and does it really exist and how will that impact us? I mean, what do you know about that? With the well, er everything I hear is there's no shadow inventory. Okay. That, that's, just, that's, yeah. that's just the myth. And, and the reason for that, uh, I think, is twofold. But the main reason is banks are really pushing to get these properties sold as short sales right. versus foreclosing on them. They've, they've over, you know, over the last couple of years, they've realized it's better economically for them to do a short sale on the property. That's why you're seeing incentives to some sellers, banks giving them twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 to sell their home short and move. Right. Well, obviously, they're not doing that for the generosity you know, right. of, of the banks. Right. They're doing that because it's financially, it's better for them than going through the whole foreclosure process. Yeah. You, have, you have states like California that have passed so many you know, stringent laws on banks to do foreclosures uh, that it's much easier for the bank to do a, a short sale. Yeah, so we're going to see more than that. As far as the shadow inventory, it's just not there. Yeah, that's and that's what I've been telling people too, but I know you have deeper connections, so I wanted to get your input. And we, we also found out the last couple of days, it looks like the legislation to extend that Debt Relief Act is in place. Right. And so it should be signed and official. 
Um, which, which it's real good, and, yeah, and, and that's very that. important so the people who do sell short won't get hit on their taxes right. for that money that they've, you know. Yeah, that they've been forgiven. Right. So that's good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for helping. I mean, I know that um, everyone would want to know what you think about the market. Yeah. Is there anything else that you can share that might well, be helpful? I, I, I'm just very excited about 2013. Yeah, I mean, me too. 2012 was our best year since the downturn, right. and each year had been better, a little bit better than the, the previous. Uh, 2013, all indications look like it's going to be even better than 12. Mm -hmm. So we're real excited about it. And every broker I've talked to, I've, I've belong to a, a few uh, broker groups, and all the brokers are feeling the same way. Everybody's excited about 13. It's going to be a good year. I think it is too. I think the consumers are, you know, overall the the and the environment out there is right. very positive. You know, buyers are excited to become homeowners, and right. you know, and oh, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you if you've heard. Is the taxes as far as um, our ability to write off our interest? Have you heard any updates on? Um... Well, so far that hasn't been touched. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, in this last tax bill that was just signed, yeah. but you know, in two months they're going to revisit that uh, when they start discussing the fiscal cliff and extending, you know, the debt limit. Okay. So at that time, you know, when they if they do pass a new tax bill, a, mm -hmm. a real inclusive one mm -hmm. that it covers everything, uh, there there could be some question there. But, uh, you know, NAR and our lobbyists are doing all we can to keep that in place. Well, I think, yeah. Because, you know, I mean, in some markets, you know, we, we, we are fortunate we have appreciation. Right. In some markets, the, you know, home ownership is great and you want to own your own home, but the property's prices don't rise. Right. Like in the Midwest and places like that, that your home's going to be pretty much the same price it is now. It's going to be that way 10 years from now. So what benefits you have? Well, the benefits you have are right enough your property taxes yeah. and your interest. So, you know, it, this could have an effect in areas like that, you know, interest deduction. If that were to go away, that would really affect markets like that. Yeah, I agree. I think that, I think that it, it would feel like the, the strength of um, what that interest deduction does for the overall economy, right. you'd think that, that would, they, oh, yeah. they would leave it alone. Yeah, I, so, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be touched. If it is, it might be just scaled down that, you know, they're going to limit, you know, over... Right now it's at a million, right. so they could bring it down a little bit yeah. you know, on how much interest you could write off on the size of your loan. But I don't think they're going to eliminate it at all. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Sure. And, yeah, and if anyone, of course, has any questions, Jeff's right here in our Danville office. Yeah. So, um, and my name again is Lisa Doyle. Call me anytime. My number is 925-890-7443. And thanks so much for watching.